Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today on the channel I am painting Gorslav the Gravekeeper, one of the main villains from Warhammer Quest Cursed City, who you may or may not be aware can bury you alive. Gorslav is the leader of the zombies, so in this video I am going to be painting him in a very similar manner to the way that I have already painted the Deadwalker zombies previously. And that means I will be predominantly speed painting him using Citadel washes. I have started with a base primer of Army Painter Matte White Spray. And I'm going to start with Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel, and I'm going to apply this to all of the skin areas. Gorslav is basically a horrible decaying creature who is in control of all the other zombies, so we're going to paint him up like a rotting zombie himself. So I'm going to be basically using my recipe for zombie flesh which I have already shared, but hopefully we should get a good result. Once the Reichland is on, we are switching to Lead Belcher, which is one of my favourite metal colours, and we're going to apply this to the shovel, we're going to apply it to the hook that he has in his hand that he is lifting up the coffin with, we are going to apply it to any other little metal areas on him, he has some spikes coming out of his shoulders. And as I'm applying this, you may notice that I am using the paint straight from the pot. Not something I would normally do. Normally, I would always recommend to thin the paints. But for this particular miniature, the metal that I am painting, it doesn't matter if the surface is a little bit uneven. It doesn't matter if it's not a really smooth surface. If I get a little bit of scratchiness in there, it's just going to add to the sense that these are old metallic objects that have been used for perhaps decades. And of course, if you don't have lead belcher, any other dark metallic will do. Next I'm switching to Rakarth Flesh and I'm going to apply this to the clothing on Gorslav. My intention here is to make it look almost like he is wearing skin, so his clothes are actually made out of decaying skin as well. And Rakarth Flesh is a nice base coat to use if you don't just want to paint from white. If I was painting directly from white on the clothing, it would end up looking a little bit too much like his skin tone. And he also has some little boots poking out from the bottom of his clothes, I'm just going to apply some Xandri dust to those. You can only really see the tips of his toes, so this is only going to take a moment, but while I have the Xandri dust out, I'm also going to quickly paint in his belt. And as you can see, I'm not using any bright, vibrant colours here, we're sticking to those very fleshy brown and grey colours. Once all those base colours are dry, we're going to switch to Seraphim Sepia, and as with the zombies, we're going to apply this to the flesh and the clothes in a blotchy manner. The intention here is not to cover the entire miniature, we want to apply it in recesses, areas where we think there might be more decay and rot, or really just haphazardly, just to give different tones and hues to the skin and the clothing. And I will also apply it to the rope that is hanging off of his belt as well, and also a little bit on the metal. Next I'm switching to Ethonian Camo Shade, and it's the same thing again, we want blotchiness on this miniature, we want little bits of green here and there and everywhere. This is just to represent additional mould, additional decay. We're going to put a little bit on the metal areas as well, because really I'm trying to get a strong connection between his skin, his clothing and his items. They all have that same degree of rot and decay. And then we are going to put some Agrax Earthshade on as well because why wouldn't I? However, I'm not going to be putting Agrax on the skin, I'm only going to put it on the clothing and also the metallic objects. And I'm going to focus mainly on the bottom of the clothes that have dragged in the mud, occasionally a few patches of mud elsewhere on the miniature as well, and then also on the metal objects which have been used to dig in the dirt, which have been used to unearth all of these corpses over the years. And I've used this approach in the past to paint so many zombies, and I'm always very happy with how it turns out. Finally, we are going to use some Army Painter Speed Paint. We're going to switch to Hardened Leather. We're going to use this on the top of the coffin that Gorslav is lifting up to release the zombie underneath, and we will also use it on the handle of his shovel. So we're not using it a lot, only very sparingly, because really, now, this miniature is almost finished. It's just a few final details. Next I'm going to use some Speed Paints Pallid Bone, obviously this is going to be for his mask, but also those skulls that he is wearing on his shoulders. Pallid Bone is one of my favourite Speed Paints, I think it looks really good either used over the matte white or also used over Army Painter Skeleton Bone. Either way, really nice results and I can see myself using Speed Paints Pallid Bone now pretty much any time I need to paint bone. Finally, we're going to use some dark wood, and this is to paint in the tree stump on the scenic base for the miniature, and then also to paint the roots that are growing through the zombie that Gorslav is unearthing. And with that done, I can pretty much call this a finished job. 
very, very quick, very easy, obviously not even using a lot of speed paints in this particular example, just relying on the Citadel washes. For the final shot here of this video, I've just put down some sterling mud on the base and then I've painted the rim of the base with lead belcher. As I have said in other videos, this base is not finished. There is still more to do here. I have seen a couple of comments in previous videos saying, oh, you need to put more details on the base, you need to dry brush the bases. All that gets done later on. When I'm shooting these videos, I'm normally painting multiple batches of miniatures at once. I'm trying to get all the filming done as quickly as possible so I can get to editing and uploading things. And doing things like the bases is just adding to the time it takes to finish the video. So I've just done the bare minimum on the base to give you an idea, a sense of what the final miniature will look like. I will go back, I will dry brush, then these miniatures will be varnished, and then I will apply other things like static grass. At some point, I'm sure I will show the complete finished set of Cursed City, and you can see what the final bases look like then. But that's it for this particular video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.